Be passionate, make a change, believe in yourself, give unconditionally, and listen. These are the commandments that my mother set up in our house since the moment I can remember. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am a human, the sky is my limit, and I stand in front of you because my beloved mother created the dreamer and the fighter that I am, and I hate making my bed. Well, the story is that one day, I, when I was like 10 years old, I woke up, dressed for school, and was ready to leave when my mother found out that I did not make my bed. Well, what's the big deal? So being or having been a perfectionist with extremely dedication to her principles, her work, her career, and her family, she freaked out. And she gave me this long lecture about how an uncommitted, irresponsible slacker I was then. Okay, mom, wait a second, it's just my bed. How am I supposed to feel committed? To what? And um, simply, back then, all that she could possibly say did not make sense at all to me. Only now, I realize, it's all about being who you are and what you want. It's about enforcing essential qualities into your being and emphasizing all positive qualities into your system because simply when you're a child you can absorb and this is simple and uh, anyways things elaborated that day i had to go to school late and i was grounded and of course i could not possibly say to my teacher and my classmates i was grounded that would have would have completely ruined my reputation so as like probably a lot of you might have guessed already i went with a typical solution and pretended illness. That's so not creative, I know, but believe me, I was completely surprised. Everybody fell for it. My teacher, my classmates, even my closest friends believed it. And it was like, oh my God, Cindy, you're just a hypocrite. You're a liar. And like, wait a second, I'm not a hypocrite. That could not possibly be the case. My mother raised me very well. And I just realized I'm a good actress. That's simple. <laughs> and I, and that was it. I knew it. I loved arts. I have did filmmaking, I have did ballet, folklore dancing, theater, lots of things. But trust me, it's a blessing I did not love, fall in love with singing, Micah. <laughs> Only God knows how a terrible voice I've got. Well, except for all the people who have heard me sing mistakenly on a national radio station live. So basically, I've been into filmmaking for the last couple of years in my life, and uh, I've did a film that I am extremely proud of. It's about, it's under the title of 2511, and uh, it's about the importance of fighting violence against women. It talks to young Palestinian beautiful women and tells them how important and essential it is for them to refuse any attempt of violence committed against them, to speak up, to report any attempt of violence, and to ask for their rights. And um, the film was a success. People loved it, the audience couldn't agree more that it was time for change. And therefore, the moment I've seen the change in the youngster's eyes, I just knew it. That's it. That's what Sandy is supposed to do. Making films about spreading awareness for a young generation and making a change. And that was pretty much the case, and my decision was completely, utterly set when I traveled to Jordan a year after I made my film to a Palestinian refugee camp called at -Talbiyya. In that camp, um, basically it was a workshop for filmmaking conducted by prof professional Palestinians in the field of cinema. And basically, I've tra uh, stayed there and worked with these youngsters for about a week. I sincerely hated their misery, bad conditions of living, poverty, sometimes their ignorance, and of course, all the time, the lack of laws and rights to protect them. And I saw these youngsters, ambitions, dreams, and potentials and capacities, they are beyond, way beyond what they do. They just needed to believe it. 
I was inspired by the camp and the refugees, and for that I owe them, and I am always thankful. Then I went back home, and I started digging and researching, and then I realized that in West Bank, where I live, like, um, in, sorry, youth suffer from high unemployment, lack of opportunities, poverty, abuse, dysfunctional families, and it's just a mess, especially the uh, physical and emotional challenges that are conflicted, inflicted by the Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict. And therefore, I realized there's an urgent need to find programs to engage these Palestinian youngsters into creative projects in which they can channel their energies into something more constructive. What I propose is drama therapy. What is that? It's simply the implementation of theater techniques in private, private and public and honorable schools in Palestine once a week, two hours a day, for over a period of six months. Drama therapy, to be precise, is defined by the National Association for Drama Therapy as the, I quote, systematic and intentional use of drama and theater processes, products, and associations to achieve the goal, the therapeutic goal of symptom relief, emotional and physical integration, and personal growth. In other words, it is to facilitate growth and promote health. Basically, drama therapy can be applied to individuals, couples, family, children, and different groups. It, is, um, it can be set in a wide variety of settings, including but not limited to hospitals, businesses, prisons, uh, mental, he mental health uh, centers, and schools. Basically, I target uh, students between the age of 12 and 18 with anxiety, stress, dysfunctional families, very negative behavior and thinking, physical, verbal, economical, political, any kind of abuse they're subjected to, to transform them to something better, to more productive people. By practicing new roles, by the theater techniques, students will be able to address thoughts and feelings normally inexpressible in words they would be able to reflect what they've learned in something more positive, in something more powerful. So, after my, the, they are capable of addressing their emotions and feelings and they're ready to absorb all kinds of techniques, here comes stage two of my project. And it is reflecting what these people have taken in all the concepts, all the roles that they've taken in and absorbed through theater, and then reflect it through images, through filmmaking. So basically, um, at that point, I hope and I believe, there should be a change. A change in the messages and the way Palestinian films are represented. And I think instead of just seeing and watching all these films with victimizing and screaming and tears and all these stereotypes and conflicts and stuff, we should be watching something more powerful, more energetic, more passionate. There are way beyond that tears in Palestinian society. There's way beyond being killed and victimized. It is true that they are being killed, that they are being abused. And this is something nobody who believes in human rights could ever ignore and deny. But at the same time, we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our humanity to be beautiful, to be productive, to be way more than what any person could possibly say that we are. So basically, the reason that I chose filmmaking and drama therapy like together is that because it's a simple, fun combination. In drama, individuals reconcile with themselves. They understand their bodies, and they address their thoughts, and they improve their behavior. They open up for the inner voice inside of them. And this is all that they need to be able to reflect it, to be able to, let's say, visualize their thoughts and their emotions. Okay, 
So let's assume that we've got the funding and we've got all the human resources that we could possibly need and everything's fine. There's still one problem. I approached a friend not very long ago and it was like, okay, dear, if drama therapy classes were applied in your children's school and after a specific period of time, they have to go to a center and reflect and visualize and express all that, all that they have learned into films, would you let them? Oh, are you stupid young lady? We're not crazy people. My kids are just so fine. Keep, stay, keep and stay away of them. I was like, okay, that's impressive. That could be very helpful during the whole initiative and implementing of the project. Filmmaking and drama therapy are not for sick people. They are to any individual who are willing to expand their horizons, to just open up to the community and be a change and be a voice. So, dear audience, let's just engage a little bit and please raise your hand if you know someone who is disabled and, uh, and need help. Oh, that's so cool. Have you ever been in a moment of depression, despair, or just a very sad, bad love story? Everybody. Have you ever been physically, verbally, or sexually abused? Good. And how many times have you heard the sentence, you're a loser, you'll never do it? Oh. <laughs> so, personally, dear audience, let's think together about filmmaking and drama therapies as means and ways to get a step closer to feeling better a bit more happier, a bit more confident, a bit more satisfied and just proud. Let's think of it as a step closer to being who we are and to making a change in our community and be, being a part of making a better future. Personally, I know I need drama and filmmaking therapy to overcome the perfection no notion that have been implemented into my system since the day I can remember and it's, oh my God, very burdening. And there's also this grief and loss feeling that I feel deep inside and I know until today, it's been like lots of years and until now, I, until now, I know I cannot live with it. I cannot do anything towards it. So I need therapy. Dear audience, who? Do you think of you needs therapy? And let's think together, what do you need therapy for? You've been a great audience. Thank you for listening.